Welcome back. All right, let's start with the most significant issue at hand, the economic situation in Sri Lanka. Like I said, not so good. Last week, the central bank made a surprising decision to float the rupee. Now, it's trading within the range of around 250 to 260, I think also 270 against the, uh, the dollar. The banks are deciding the rate. When it goes up significantly, there's going to be repercussions. The biggest one uh, that might occur and is occurring right now is the rise of prices exponentially. Our entire price structure will take a massive hit as we go on. Now, I will not join the doom and gloom brigade and start scaring you, but I'm trying to break this uh, to the level that you and I can understand and think rationally. There is no room for fear. Now, the decision by the central bank has its negative and positives. Many liberal thinking economists believe that this was the right thing to do. Let the market decide as to what the price of the rupee is against the dollar. However, others uh, were strongly advocating against this. They wanted uh, to hold the rupee at around 200 ru uh, rupees per dollar and keep the imports low. For some reason, the central bank governor has decided to float it. We, know, uh, we now know that this was one of the requests made by the IMF during their visit to Sri Lanka and in, uh, it was there in their assessments as well. So it also bids the question, did the central bank finally cave into the pressure and did exactly what the liberal economist wants and uh, basically did what the IMF wants? <laughs> තවදුරටත් නම්මේ ශීලි භාවයට පත් කිරීමට අපි තීරණය කරලා තිබෙනවා පොලි අනුපාතයේ වැඩි කිරීමට තීරණය කරලා තිබෙනවා අපි දන්නවා මේ වයින් සමහර විට විවිධ ප්‍රතිපිපාක ජන ජීවිතයේ ලැබෙන්න තිබුණත් දිගුකාලීන ස්ථායි භාවය රැක ගැනීම සඳහා මහ බැංකුව මේ තීරණය අරන් තිබෙනවා අපි දකිනවා වෙල්දපොලේ යම් වෙනස් වීම සිදු වෙනවා විනිමය අනුපාතිකේ ඒතර සමහර වෙලාවට අපි නුදුරු දිනක යම් කැලඹිලි ස්වභාවයක් දකින්න පුළුවන් නමුත් අපි හිතනවා විශේෂයෙන් වෙල්දපොලේ විශ්වසනීය බව වෙල්දපොලේ ක්‍රියාකාරීත්වය දියුණු වීමත් සමගම ඊටම ඉක්මනින් වෙල්දපොලේ තුල විනිමය අනුපාතිකය ස්ථාවර වෙන්න බොහෝ දුරට අපි ස්ථාවර වෙනු ඇතයි බොහෝ දුරට අපි අපේක්ෂා කරනවා දැන් විනිමය අනුපාතිකය මෙහෙම යම් ප්‍රමාණයක නම්මිශීලි වෙද්දී ඒම යම් යම් බලපෑම් ඇති වෙන බව අපි දන්නවා විශේෂයෙන් මිල ගණන් වලට රජයේ මූල්‍ය කටයුතු වලට යම් බලපෑමක් සිද්ධ වෙනවා නමුත් දැන් මේ දේවල් අපි දකින්නේ තාවකාලිකව ඇති වෙන කම්පනයක් විදිහට පමණයි මොකද අපිට ආර්ථිකයේ දිගුකාලීනව කිසියම් ස්ථාවර භාවයක් ලබා ලබා ගන්න අවශ්‍ය නැහැ කෙටිකාලීනව යම් යම් දුක් ගැහැට සහ දුෂ්කරතා විඳින්න යනවා ඉතින් අපි හිතන්නේ කෙටිකාලීනව මෙවැනි තත්ත්වයක් තිබුණත් අපිට ආර්ථිකයේ යම් ස්ථාවර භාවයකට ගේන්න පුළුවන්කම තියෙනවා විශේෂයෙන් විනිමය අනුපාතිකය ලිහිල් වෙද්දී අපි දකිනවා වෙල්දපොලේ විදේශ විනිමය ද්‍රවශීලතාව ඉහළ යනවා ඒ වගේම අපනයන දිරි ගැන්වීමක් සිද්ධ වෙනවා අනවශ්‍ය ආනයන තවදුරටත් අධෛර්යමත් වෙන්න පුළුවන් රජයේ ක්‍රියාව මාර්ගත් සමගම well, as I said, Sri Lanka does not have many options right now. There, there is in fact uh, limited options. We can keep begging from countries like India, China and the rest of the world. But how long can that last? The next is going to the IMF. Now that solution uh, will ease our burden in the shorter term, but very bad for Sri Lanka in the longer term. I know. We have to think about what we are going to do right now. And the, then the other options uh, is to tighten our situation internally, cut down on unnecessary expenditure and get in new money, which means uh, foreign direct investments. Now, the decision taken by the central bank seems to be favoring the latter one. They seem to be cutting down a lot of uh, uh, imports to the country and making sure that they are looking for, uh, by floating the, the rupee, it, it, it entices a certain, certain type of investors out there, but, but that is uh, yet to be seen. We also need to ask the question as to why suddenly we are facing this economic crisis. As I told you, COVID is the reason. We don't have to figure it out. You know, it's COVID. Because of COVID is the reason that our economy took a massive hit. And here we are. To understand how much uh, of uh, an impact COVID has made in our, uh, on our economy, Danidu Dhanavasam joins me now uh, from the Data Wall to break it down all for you. Danidu, um, good to see you. Uh, what have you found, Taswa? I mean, there is a massive impact from COVID uh, on the Sri Lankan economy. Uh, what kind of details do you have for us tonight? 
Yes, Mahesh. Now, it is very difficult to put an exact figure when, it, when we are trying to explain the exact impact on the economy. But we are going to look at certain areas which have been creating foreign exchange, which we completely lost out on. Now, tourism, an aspect that everyone is talking about. What, but what exactly was the impact from the pandemic? Now, in 2019, we see the average amount of inflows, about 1.9 million tourists coming in. In 2020, a drastic drop. And even 2021, another drastic drop with an estimated loss of over 8 billion US dollars. Now, that is the kind of ripple impact we are seeing. The loss of that kind of amount is what we are seeing as of now because we are now looking for foreign exchange. We'll take that same sentiment forward to remittances. Now, in, even the remittances situation was similar. 1.6 billion that we have lost out on from the year 2020 to 2021. These are, central, these are figures from the central bank. Now, again, in a position where we are looking for foreign exchange, these are the kind of reasons why we are, we, are, we are seeing a situation like this within our country. Translating all of that, we have seen that the GDP has been equally very badly affected given, given the kind of situation that has been generated in, 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 in the world. Now, the reason why I say in the world is because of two reasons. The central bank and the government are taking steps to rationalize imports and to create that, to, to save the money within this country, right? to, to create inflows and to save the money. But we should, the second factor that we should bear in mind is that there's a war currently taking place between Russia and Ukraine, and we should bear in mind the kind of impact that would have on our country. Over to you, Mahesh. Indeed, uh, we have to wait and see how exactly all this will, uh, you know, translate to that is the at the data wall. Thank you very much. Well, if you ask the business community today, they will say the floating of the rupee should have been done months before. The argument is simple. Take, for example, what has happened thus far here in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka has been lavishly importing unnecessary items since 2020 without capping them. We knew COVID was raging on in the world and there's going to be a tough time on the economic front, not just in Sri Lanka, but all around the world. We should have put import controls many years back, maybe uh, as soon as the whole uh, pandemic started, and ensure that we are not at a tight spot right now. But since we didn't, we had to print an exuberant amount of money to keep the economy running. That amounts to around 1.3 trillion rupees. So while we print money from one side, we hold the dollar at around 200 rupees instead of allowing the markets to decide. In comes uh, multinational companies which are, are, are rampant in Sri Lanka and uh, several other companies that are importing everything. For them, this is gold. Since we are not letting the business of the day dictate the accurate price of the dollar, they make a, a good bang to the buck. Uh, for an example, let's take uh, an import of a certain milk powder. He's, he's having a really good time. How? Well, because he's paying a lower rate for the dollar on the other hand, we are printing money and providing it to our people. Now, what does uh, our people do? They go take that money and buy that same imported milk powder instead of buying a local product. And so even the money we printed goes out of the country. Now, with the markets deciding the accurate, the accurate rate for the dollar, many businessmen believe that there will be a cut down on unnecessary imports and provide an opportunity for the local manufacturer to increase its presence. However, economists who argue against this move say is that the government should have addressed the critical issue that led to this current crisis, fuel prices, and not meddle with the rupee. They believe that if the government cannot manage the flow of fuel, which is uh, buying and selling fuel, then to provide that opportunity for the private sector to address that and work that crisis rather than going to the far end to let the rupee float. They also say that this would have indeed lead towards prices of everything soaring and our current price structures of uh, every commodity taking a massive hit, as you can see that is happening right now. What's done is done. The rupee is floating and the markets are deciding the price of the currency. This is not the first time Sri Lanka has allowed that. Uh, this, also, this also happened during uh, President Chandrika Kumarathunga's uh, tenet uh, back in 1995 and in 2000 when Sri Lanka was facing a brutal conflict. We resorted to this matter mainly because this is beneficial for the government's immediate crisis at hand. <laughs> Raja Banda Pitrating in a Bavastavadi, the Tiruba do Icon, not Tiruba do Icon the Cote, Lanka, other Tibera Tiruba do Pramari, Samaning, Samasta, Apiana in a Parima Gatta, Parimaving, Sieta Pahaka Pamana Matamakama, appear the Tiruba do Icon. 
ඉතින් අර රුපියල අවප්‍රමාණය වීම නිසා අපි අය කරන තීරුබදුවලින් ලැබන ආදායම රජයේ වැඩි වෙනවා පළවෙනි දිනක තමයි දැන් රජයේ අපෙන් අපේතුමු ඩොලර් 100ක් ණය ගත්තොත් එහෙම පිටරටේ ඒ ඩොලර් 100 මහ බැංකුවට විකුණන්නේ රුපියල් 200 මට්ටමකට රුපියල් 20000ක් තමයි මහ ආණ්ඩුවට ලැබෙන්නේ නමුත් දැන් මේක අවප්‍රමාණය වුණතුන් 250ට රජයට ලැබෙන රුපියල් 25000 ඇත්තටම රජය මෙතෙන්දී මේ සිද්ධ වෙන්නේ වාසිදායක තත්ත්වයකින් නේද Well, what I can say about this is simple. I'm not a decision maker on this matter, but certainly the decisions taken by those decision makers will affect me just like it will affect you. History will judge whether the correct move was made and in about a month or so we will reap the benefits whether it's good or bad. So my dear friends, buckle up. We're in for a bumpy ride. Let's get some clarity on this economic situation as well and steps taken by the government. Uh, for that, I'm now joined by Parliamentarian Professor Ranjit Bandara, one of the economic minds of the current government. Professor, thank you very much for joining. Uh, good to see you. Now, many local economies, economic pundits are finding it absolutely baffling, uh, Parliamentarian, that the government depreciated the rupee. Uh, what was the thinking behind this? And why was it necessary to take this, uh, take this uh, decision right now? I think we are not uh, taking it uh, in a hurry. Uh, you know, this has been the case uh, for long. Uh, I would say we would have taken it a uh, little early. Uh, but of course, we were a bit cautious uh, when the rupees uh, in the floating uh, uh, mode. Uh, it would have had uh, different consequences. That is why I think the central bank was a bit reluctant and delayed. Uh, however, um, unless uh, uh, we implement uh, this type of uh, uh, policy, the situation would have been uh, much worse. Uh, than that uh, we could uh, even imagine. Now, there are quite a few uh, serious concerns. Uh, one of them is that uh, how we could encourage uh, our export revenue and also the remittance. And the tourism, of course, just started, but uh, still, uh, to some extent, the COVID is uh, uh, a global uh, phenomenon. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, normalcy. Uh, therefore, uh, there, was a, there was a huge uh, uh, request by various parties. I think the government of the central bank have uh, taken some of these positive uh, uh, concerns uh, in relation to um, uh, the foreign exchange. The, what, the, what the management uh, uh, system that would uh, better fit into uh, the current uh, the crisis. Parliamentarian, can you confirm uh, that the government has indeed floated the rupee and uh, was uh, this decision based on a request made by the IMF? No, this is not a depreciation. This is, uh, this is a kind of a, a guided uh, floating uh, uh, arrangement. The why we call it a guided, Mahesh, you know very well, the, the we want rupees to be uh, stable uh, in relation to a dollar. Now, we had two choices, either to uh, maintain in an artificial manner uh, by pumping uh, uh, money to the market to meet the demand, the dollar demand, uh, but uh, how long we could do that? And uh, the, the, the when uh, the central bank introduced this guided uh, the floating uh, exchange rate policy, uh, in the short run, uh, as you could see, uh, uh, the exchange rate uh, uh, go somewhere between uh, 260 to 280 rupees per dollar. But I am pretty sure within a few weeks it will settle and the central bank is happy to uh, see it uh, 
uh, somewhere in 2230. Uh, so, this is uh, basically not the depreciation, this is a, a guided uh, 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 floating. Uh, this is uh, this is not the advice uh, by, uh, this was not done by the advice uh, of IMF or any other global financial institution and uh, we must uh, uh, keep that in mind. We have about uh, 450 learned economists at the central bank and also we have quite a few able people at the treasury and uh, even, even in uh, the academic circles there are quite a few learned people. I think their opinion has also been uh, taken into account. Makes uh, perfect sense, but there is a lot of fear in the country that our economic conditions will be like that of um, Prime Minister Sirma Obanda and Agustina back in, I think, the 50s or the 60s. Do you think that's the case right now? No, you see, the Sirma Obanda uh, economic policy was uh, uh, inward looking uh, economic policy. The everyone knows it has a close kind of a economic policy. Now, we are not uh, into it, but all what we are trying to do is that uh, if we could uh, rely on ourselves to an extent, so what is the extent that we could rely on ourselves? Now, say for example, some of these basic things uh, we do not need to import and uh, we certainly can uh, manufacture locally. So, and uh, restricting some of these uh, non-essentials, um, uh, in one hand we are trying to manage our uh, existing foreign reserves in uh, wiser manner and also on the other hand we are trying to encourage uh, the local industries uh, by creating opportunities for unemployment. Now, unemployment could be a problem uh, time to come unless we address um, in such a way. And, uh, I think we must go beyond uh, the politics. Uh, the, we would have opened it up in, like in 1977. How many infant industries uh, collapse? And uh, how many opportunities we have lost? Uh, therefore, the president is quite clear that the Sri Lanka has the potential of uh, doing certain things in a very sustainable manner. So, let us see how we could uh, uh, move forward. Parliamentarian now according into uh, economic pundits in here in Sri Lanka, they suggest that the IMF uh, is the final solution. Is the government also thinking in that direction? You see, this is the thinking that the opposition has always been put forward. They do not see there are options. Now, one of the questions that we should ask ourselves is that why not we look for the what the global financial institute, including IMF, could offer for us to work out from this crisis. And we being a member of the World Bank and the IMF and various other global financial institutions, why not uh, look for opportunities uh, as a member? And uh, the politically one could create uh, a, a kind of a, a ha-hu uh, you know, the IMF is the last resort. I mean, we have been to IMF 16 times, uh, whereas Pakistan been 21 times. And uh, of course, there are uh, countries, uh, uh, they were not uh, very uh, helpful uh, in um, getting their economy right uh, with the uh, advice uh, of the IMF. That is the, the, the kind of a fear that the, the, the certain political factions have created in the minds of the, the general public. Therefore, I would say if something that need to be done, whether it is uh, advised by uh, the IMF or any other global financial institution, we must look for it. We should not say no to anything as because we need uh, to get out from this mess somehow as soon as we could. Parliamentarian, even though you say and you deny uh, the government is not following the IMF, uh, on paper it looks like we are following the instructions of the IMF. Why don't we, you know, buy the bullet and go now take the money? You see, there are certain questions, uh, there are certain areas of improvements uh, we have to do whether IMF asks or not. 
Now, if I ask one simple question from the audience, don't we need to increase the government uh, revenue? Now, if you take uh, the government revenue in relation to GDP, we are one of the lowest in the world. And also, don't we need to uh, rationalize government expenditure? Don't we need to manage our public enterprises in a uh, sustainable manner? Don't we need to utilize, underutilize public resources in such a way? So these are the things that we should do, whether IMF or any other global financial institution asks us to do or not. Right? Now, rather than creating a mindset uh, and changing the mindset of general public, I don't think help at all uh, to get out from this mess. Thank you, Mahesh. Thank you very much having me. Well, thank you very much, uh, Parliamentarian Professor Ranjit Bandara. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Let's take a short commercial break upon our return. There's victory at the UNHRC in Geneva. Back in a moment with the details.